to order and uh, welcome those of you who have come this evening and uh, those of you that are tuning in at home on Rogers uh, TV. Uh, we are also live streamed on uh, online at the city website if you would like to catch us there and you can catch reruns on uh, uh, YouTube I believe uh, so you can uh, go back in the archives and see what each and every one of us did or did not have to say. So um, I think spring is here and uh, I presume there might be a few people that still are indoors tonight, although I can tell you it would be hard to keep uh, a lot of us inside tonight if it wasn't for this. So um, We have completed our in-camera meeting and um, I'll ask that we have a uh, moment of silent reflection at this time. Thank you. Are there any additional items from any member of council? Councillor Chamberlain. Yes, I'd like to comment on an event at the library for April the 12th. Thank you. Any other members of council? Members of staff? Additional items? No, seeing none. I have one additional item uh, with regards to clarification of a recent news article. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest, please? Councillor McManaman. Thank you, Worship. I declared a pecuniary interest on a matter on the in-camera agenda. Thank you. Confirmation of the minutes, please. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Twaddle. The minutes of the regular council meeting held on March 17th, 2014 is printed. Be adopted. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. A confirmation of the minutes of March 24th, please. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Twaddle at the minutes of the special council meeting held on March 24, 2014, as printed, be adopted. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. A resolution moving council into committee of the whole, please. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Twaddle, the city council now go into committee of the whole to consider public meetings, deputations, public question period, matters arising from correspondence, reports, matters table, motion for which notice was previously given, and other business. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. We're now in Committee of the Whole. We do not have any public meetings scheduled this evening. Uh, we do, however, have a deputation, and I would uh, invite uh, Mr. Brad Drake of the United Way uh, with regards to the National Day of Mourning. Thank you very much, Ms. Mayor Welcome. and Council. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you, City of Owen Sound, for your past participation and proclamation of the Day of Mourning. You're one of the few municipalities across Canada that takes the time and the effort to actually officially recognize this important day. On this 30th anniversary of the day of morning's inception, we can take a sense of accomplishment that indeed workplace accidents and fatalities have decreased. Workers and employers have become more knowledgeable and workplaces have become made somewhat safer. But with each year, there are still thousands of injuries that gravely impact workers and their families. And over 600 people a year die on their job sites. These numbers remain far too high and it is only through the regular recommitment and creating a culture of safety that we can continue to see these tragic numbers continue to decline. So I'm here tonight to ask once again for the City of Owen Sound as a municipality to stand with the workers and work, workers' families in this community and proclaim the National Day of Mourning April 28th and hold a short ceremony at 1045 out on the steps <laughs> and honor those workers who've been killed or injured in the last year by the raising of the Day of Mourning flag. Again, as I say, it is this recommitment year after year that continues to show improvement on the numbers that are so important. For workplace accident doesn't just impact that worker, it impacts his coworkers, the productivity of the company or the organization he's working for, his family, and the entire community. So again, I thank you for showing the civic responsibility you have in the past, and I hope you will again. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation this evening, Mr. Drake. Is there a councillor body? I believe we've done this every year and, uh, and, and maybe lacking proper wording, but if we can do the same, I, I move that we do the same that we did every other year. And um, I ask the clerk just to fill in what I mean, read my mind and, and do it better. Thanks. Thank you very much. And we will, uh, we'll see you at April, on April 28th uh, out front. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Councillor Lemon. I was just going to comment. I was recently reading an article pertaining to workers in the United States, and there were literally tens of thousands of miners who were killed. It's really a horrible thing to think about, and I'm glad we are doing this. Okay. Public question period. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to ask a question of this council? Okay, we, uh, we do not have a correspondence uh, package that requires direction of council. We do have a series of consent agenda items, some uh, planning notifications, and uh, some business, new business license applications as well. It's council's direction. Councillor Purden. The consent agenda. Just direct people who are watching at home or, or the live stream, uh, if you check the, um, the website, you'll see the, uh, the consent agenda items. Uh, they're, they're all routine matters um, in terms of, of uh, business before council, um, not limited to business license applications, but also some uh, routine um, boards and committees for receipt. Councillor McManaman. Thank you, Worship. I just, um, I guess, wanted to highlight in the uh, correspondence we received the letter from the, the county, not really, um, we just sent them a letter asking if they wanted to sit down and discuss restructuring, and that didn't, uh, wasn't uh, approved by the county. I'm trying to put that in a nice way. They didn't <laughs> agree to that, so uh, I know it's, it's raised numerous times, not just here, but at other levels about what we should look at uh, working closer together and restructuring and uh, that wasn't received favorably at the county so I just wanted to highlight that unfortunately highlight that correspondence it's an unfortunate highlight that's duly noted further discussion all those in favor opposed that's carried we have a series of reports. The first report, 12B1, is from the Manager of Economic Development and Tourism, and this is an annual request for an art crawl in the Percy England Parkette as we look outdoors. Councillor Lemon. With pleasure, I would move the recommendation. It's sort of nice now. People are talking about doing things outdoors other than shoveling snow, pushing <laughs> vehicles, and putting down salt or that blue stuff that we use now. But anyway, it's a nice, nice thing, and we should certainly support this. Although, uh, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. We have a report from the Director of Financial Services, and this is with regards to the 2014 Downtown Improvement Area Budget, and I believe they're uh, suggesting a 0% uh, increase to their levy. Councillor Purden. Uh, I would move uh, acceptance of the DIA budget for 214. Thank you. Mr. Ritchie, any comment? Uh, no, Your Worship, I was going to say their treasurer, Mr. Parsons, is here. Should there be any questions specifically about their budget? Thank you. Councillor Lemon? I'm trying to remember, is it four years or five years that there's been no increase in the DIA levy? Three. Three? I thought it was more than that. Four? Thank you. That's a good sign. Councillor McManaman, then Councillor Body. Thank you, Your Worship. Ben, I, just for Mr. Parsons, since he's the treasurer of the organization, I, I have mentioned this to Councillor Burton and uh, Councillors Burton and Chamberlain. The um, the discussion around the um, the the amount the DIA pays for the no parking zones downtown, the twenty-seven and a half thousand thousand. Um, no parking meters. No parking. What did I say? You said no parking. Oh, zone. no parking meter zone. Sorry. <laughs> yes, thanks for the clarification, Councillor. I, I, I was just concerned that that was taken out of reserves again, and I, and I 
would hope that in future years that's built right into the budget because that's I think it's an important partnership I think it's working pretty well at least from my perspective um, and I just think it's important that that be recognized in the budget itself as opposed to coming from reserves mm -hmm. uh, that was just a comment I'd made and I thought I should make it to, since the treasurer's here thank okay. you thank you Councillor Boddy I was just going to uh, point out to Councillor Lemon that I know it was the first year that was the uh, of this council was the last uh, increase because I asked some questions and you'll remember the attack on me thereafter. People, it was like anyway, um, and so there has not been, a, been so an increase since. And I do notice, and I think it's important to notice that one of the things that had me upset at that time was the amount of money that was going into uh, wages and administration and the smaller comparative amount that was going into promotions, uh, advertising, beautification, and that has changed, as I've noticed year after year, that there is more money going into beautification and uh, the, the reason to be of the DIA, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased to see that, and pleased to see that continuing. Councillor Chamberlain. Yes, I wonder if we just might ask um, Mr. Parsons to actually make a couple comments. There's some good news stories going on. One of the things that the downtown core is working on their revitalization and uh, the owners the, through the membership are having um, get togethers and there's one coming up and I think there was a couple of things that Mr. Parsons might like to comment on if that would be time for that. Mr. Parsons, if you'd like to comment, please come up to the podium and uh, make your comments. Thanks, Councillor Chamberlain. Um, first of all, I would like to say that I do believe that everyone has learned to do more with less. And when it comes to events, I believe that we're able to carry out, again, more with less. And uh, how we do that is through things like Facebook, Twitter, and other means of advertising that are not particularly conventional. Um, when it comes down to uh, supporting the parking strategies, um, certainly it is not our intent to totally deplete our reserves or our savings account as, our, uh, as we've been requested to refer to it. Um, I, I do believe we're in fairly good shape when it comes to uh, where we're at with that. Um, beautification has been major on our minds and it will continue to be. Uh, we can cut a little bit or trim a little bit from that budget to uh, uh, add to other uh, events. I don't think anyone will notice, especially when you get into the actual uh, purchasing of flowers. Um, it did look fairly good last year on a few thousand dollars less than we had even budgeted. So uh, we'll continue to uh, make sure that that is a main priority. Um, our intent though is to get together with our membership and actually ask of them what they deem important, particularly our, uh, our business owners and uh, property owners, just to see where they in fact would like to go with that. Um, again this year, as Councillor Chamberlain has alluded to, there will be a party and uh, due to the success of our party last year, uh, it really is a party, but a number of things get addressed during that night. And although it's fairly informal, um, notes are taken in regard to what does get said, and then it comes back to our board for consideration. So, um, I really feel positive about what is going on and the communication between the DIA and the city, especially through uh, Director of Financial Services, it's uh, truly a joy to work with him. So I think that's all I care to say. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for all the work that you do Thank with you. the DIA. It's a lot, of, uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of volunteered hours yet again. Thank you. We have a report from the Director of Community Services with regards to a draft lease agreement with the Frog Ponds for the operation of a concession at the Julie MacArthur Regional Recreation Center. Council's direction on this. Councillor McManaman. 
I'm uh, pleased to see this come forward. Can I ask if the director could just give a brief overview of it? Absolutely. For the, for the public? Yep. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship, the steering committee of the um, Regional Rec Center had given direction that we issue an RFP, and we did that. And the results were reported to council, and council had directed that we uh, they authorize staff to enter into negotiations with the Frog Pond respecting an agreement to operate a food concession at the Julie MacArthur Regional Rec Center. Um, I would point out to you that our agreement with the Family Y does put the responsibility for any and all aspects of the provision of food at the rec center uh, with the city. Any revenue that we gain from that uh, lease will be shared equally by the city and the Y and held in a reserve for future capital works. Uh, I've been um, negotiating with Mr. Neil Morrison of the, uh, of the Frog Ponds. There is a draft agreement in the package of council this evening. The, uh, the key points of the agreement are, uh, are outlined for council. So it's a five-year agreement. The, uh, what the tenant pays is outlined there, and in year one it relates to the leasehold improvements. I think it's important to note that the approval of the city and why is uh, required respecting the design of the space to make sure that it complements the rest of the finishes in the building. Um, so the recommendation is that, um, that council, in consideration of the report, receives the report and requests staff bring forward a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the agreement. Thank you. Councillor Adair. Thank you, Your Worship. I guess my question is around um, timing. I'm still going to need to be up there for another uh, month or so with power skating and, uh, and hockey tryouts, not for me, but for uh, my son. And um, it's really hard to get a decent cup of coffee at the, uh, at the rec center. And I'm hoping um, before next fall, when hockey season starts again, that uh, I'll be able to have a decent cup of coffee. And if so the planner, we all the, hope you will be able thank to, you. If too, the planner could, uh, could speak to that. <laughs> Ms. Coulter. Uh, through you, Your Worship, really, um, we'll wait on Mr. Morrison to provide the signed agreement. Um, he has been in to speak to the CBO about the renovations, and I know they've been together speaking with the health unit, so really the timing is in part um, up to him to decide. So staff have worked to move this along. It sounds like a uh, decent cup of java is uh, right around the corner. That's good news. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. And thank you to staff for uh, bringing this uh, finally to this point where it is. We have a report from Director of Community Services with regards to the National Day of Honour on May 9th. It's Council's direction on this. Councillor Lemon. I would move, oh, sorry. I would, uh, move the re uh, recommendation. Uh, I am believe that uh, uh, this is the way to go. The only question I've got, I agree with CFB Meaford, I agree with the Legion, uh, et cetera. But why Larry Miller? Because this monument was built by municipal funds, not federal funds. I will go to the Director of Community Services for feedback on that. Through you, Your Worship, um, the, um, the review of the wording with uh, our MP, Larry Miller, is mm -hmm. suggested simply because the proclamation came from the federal government. So if Mr. Miller's office, who was quite helpful in providing the proclamation, could provide any um, clarification or confirmation that the wording, in fact, that staff is proposing is, in fact, appropriate uh, I would very much appreciate that. So that's why we had included them in the resolution. Councillor McManaman. Thank you, Worship. This is a fairly important uh, topic. I'm wondering if, if the director could give an overview for those at home about this day of honour. That would be fine. Thank you, Worship. Um, as Council is, is likely aware, on Tuesday, March 18th, the Prime Minister uh, welcomed home the last members of the Canadian Armed Forces who had been serving Canada's mission in Afghanistan. 
Subsequently, the federal government uh, issued a proclamation and it's attached to the report declaring May 9th as a national day of honour. The proclamation has asked Canadians to take notice and govern themselves accordingly and so the report was really about how the city could mark the day that has been set aside. Um, so sta Canada is going to mark May 9th. Uh, some of the ceremonies I think are still unfolding and there's to be more information available on the, uh, on the government's website. The city has a cenotaph and in 2009 f after the restoration we have a um, monument beside the cenotaph because our cenotaph is designated under the Ontario Heritage Act. There are plaques on that monument for World War I, II and the Korean War and its uh, staff are recommending that we put a pla brass plaque on the, on the granite monument beside the cenotaph and the, the wording is, uh, is attached for council and, and as Councillor Lemon pointed out, uh, we would like to confirm with Branch 6 of the Legion um, that they're supportive of the wording and ask the Legion, uh, the Canadian Forces Base in Meaford, uh, to participate with the city in marking this event. So obviously timing is of the essence uh, in order to get the, the plaque uh, manufactured and installed before May 9th. Thank you for that overview. Councillor Twaddle. Well, thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> I think it's really important and, and fitting that we do this. And, and just to note, it's my understanding, I had a tour of uh, the Land Forces Training Area, Meaford, three or four years ago. Um, virtually every Canadian serviceman who served in Afghanistan trained at Land Forces Meaford before they were deployed. So, uh, um, you know, there's a significant local context for this this recognition. Thank you. So further discussion to the motion. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. <clears throat> We have a direct, uh, report from the Director of Community Services, and this is uh, with regards to uh, conditions of site plan approval for Heritage Grove. And I will go to the Director of Community Services, Ms. Coulter, uh, just for a brief overview <coughs> of the, um, the report and a bit of the background and the, uh, the recommendation that's in front of Council for this evening. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Council had originally approved an application for site plan approval in September of 2011 and then entered into a site plan agreement in September or August of 2012 uh, for the development of the Heritage Grove property and subsequently uh, we issued building permits for uh, the stores that you see on that site today, the, uh, the Winners, the, the Michaels and the Value Village. Council also approved on June 10th, 2013, an amendment to that original site plan and that approval was uh, subsequently appealed by the applicant to the Ontario Municipal Board. There's a chart attached to the report. Um, there were nine conditions um, that Council had approved the site plan subject to and there's a chart attached um, that shows how each of the conditions imposed by Council has been satisfied. Mr. Elston, working for the city, has prepared an amending site plan agreement and we have uh, provided that to the developer. Um, council will recall that the original <coughs> approval or the amending approval by council had a completion date for the on-site work of December 2013 and given the time that's elapsed, um, the revised agreement has a completion date for on-site works of December 2014 and I believe that's acceptable to the developer. It's anticipated that once council authorizes the execution of the amending agreement that the uh, appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board with respect to the site plan uh, will be withdrawn. So certainly there's been lots of consultation in the preparation of the report with the development team as well as the Gray Sauble Conservation Authority uh, and Mr. Elston in, in working out the conditions. Right, the recommendation then is that Council would authorize a bylaw to allow the Mayor and Clerk to execute the amending site plan agreement with Heritage Grove Centers, Inc. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Twaddle? 
Well, thank you, Worship. I'm pleased to move the recommendation. I think it's <coughs> important that this project uh, go forward. Um, I, I would, though, ask the um, Director of Community Services the difference between the Phase Two site plan that we approved, the conditions that we approved on June 10, 2013, that were appealed to the OMB, and the site plan that we're approving today. Are there any changes in those conditions from June 10, 2013? Through you, Your Worship, there were originally nine conditions. Um, those conditions haven't been changed, save and except for condition three that relates to the date uh, which work would be completed. And we've agreed that um, it's reasonable that December 10th, 2013 wouldn't apply, that it would be December 2014. So all the conditions are the same, save and except that one condition. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boddy. Um, I recognize this has been a lot of work over the last couple of years for our, our planning staff and for uh, Mr. Goya, who is uh, present in his staff. In, in the middle of this, Mr. Goya lost uh, Mr. Windrum, who was his planner, who uh, I think most of us know uh, had a heart attack and died suddenly, which must have, been, uh, must have been difficult. I congratulate everyone that's worked their buns off on this uh, staff and Mr. Goya in uh, getting this uh, to this place, and uh, this is good news. And uh, hopefully we can keep moving forward in, in this manner. Further discussion, Councillor Purden. <coughs> uh, on that note, just, um, I don't know, as a council, I don't think we, um, at this table anyway, express condolences to all of the friends and family of Mr. Windrum. It certainly was a shocking development and uh, very sad because he'd been here numerous times. So I uh, just maybe a little late, but. Uh. An appropriate uh, memorial was uh, sent on behalf of the city. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. We're, uh, we're back, in, back in the saddle and things are rolling forward well, so congratulations to all involved. We have a report uh, with regards to the uh, Healthy Communities Partnership Conference opportunity. Uh, this was a report that uh, Council had requested that staff bring back on um, some options around in-kind uh, donation of silly rentals uh, to the um, Healthy Communities Conference. Councillor Adair. This question, uh, just reading through the report, is it, um, am I correct that uh, we did enter into some agreement um, to waive the fees or the fees um, when a very similar thing was done in 2010? Um, would that be correct? Mm -hmm. uh, through your worship, yes, in 2010 the fees were waived. Um, then I would uh, move a similar motion to what Councillor Boddy moved earlier, which is that we do with this what we did last time. And let the clerk try clerk, to... Uh, clerks are clear on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. The, Excellent. I'll let the clerk work on that. But uh, All right. So, seems like a... Motion on the floor, we have Councillor Chamberlain and Councillor Purden. Yes, I, I think this is just an excellent report and I really appreciate that, uh, that that is the recommendation. There were three recommendations in this report and the, the one that uh, Councillor Adair has commented on is, is number one, if that makes it a bit clearer. Um, but the, uh, this conference is a whole community um, involvement and it is happening on May 14th and 15th and uh, uh, the 15th is the day that we would be having it at the Bayshore Community Center and um, there was a call for abstracts this year for people to put in ideas of how to say how, how this community is healthy mm -hmm. and it was a very good response and just so everyone knows it's a very good news story because everything that we are actually presenting is happening somewhere in our region and there's some really good ideas. So I'm hoping everyone will be able to attend, and that is part of uh, what, what we're sponsoring and making sure people know about it as well. So uh, I, I'm very pleased, and I think the report was so well done. Thank you. Councillor Purden. 
Uh, yes, I'd like to speak in uh, favor of the motion. I'm very, very pleased um, if this motion passes that the city would be uh, partnering in such a very concrete way with this important work that's also aligned with our strategic plan. <coughs> And this is exactly how I see our city making a contribution to healthy communities in a, in a way that we can. Um, uh, and it's a very, very important conference and I think a very important partnership as well. Okay. Councillor McManaman. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I won't be supporting the motion. Um, I think this community's uh, conference, I think Ch Councillor Chamberlain's given a very good overview of the importance of it to our community and the uh, and the, uh, hopefully the success it's going to be like it was in 2010. Um, I, however, won't, am not in favor of waiving the facility to rental fee and the main reason, as I've stated uh, numerous times before, is the unfairness of that situation. Uh, we have a bylaw later this evening. There's a uh, sporting event in the bylaws later this evening that uh, is going to attract all sorts of teams from across the province here. We're charging them the full rate. There's no, no waiving of fees for them. Um, the last meeting we gave a discount for a fall fair event and we charged the one world festival the full amount uh, i think it was last year or might have been two years ago the emancipation festival was fees were waived summer folk in the very same meeting paid full fees um, it's an extremely inconsistent and unfair in my view way of doing business if we want to give grants to non-for-profit community groups then we should say that it should be stated a budget time a budget line should be set for it and that should be allocated that's the fair way to do it in my opinion I'm dealing with this ad hoc you know we'll have another one two weeks from now almost certainly or certainly a month from now we will um, somebody asking us to waive fees and we'll have this argument all again um, there is no line in the budget for giving grants if we want there to be the time to discuss that is at budget time put $20,000 or whatever amount you think is fair in a, in a budget line, uh, defend it, argue about it then, and let's be done with it. Um, I just, by the way, wouldn't support that either, but at least the discussion <laughs> should be had at budget. We approved a 2.85% budget increase this year. If council as a whole wants <coughs> that to be 2.95 and give money to non-for-profit community groups or give discounts, um, I think that should have been the time to do it, not now. And uh, anyone who is in favor of doing this, that's a, a, certainly a fair uh, point of view, just be prepared the next time this comes forward to vote for it again. And then be prepared at budget time for the budget to be thousands and thousands of dollars out of line. And be prepared to then raise taxes to make up that, that loss. That's, that's my rant for tonight. I won't be supporting. I support the event wholeheartedly, just like I supported the fall fair event last uh, meeting. <laughs> but I certainly don't support um, waiving the fees. Thank you. Thank you. In the absence of uh, any policy, uh, we'll have this discussion numerous times, I'm sure. So a policy may be something that council wants to consider. Councillor Adair, and then Councillor Lemon. <coughs> Thank you. Um, well, actually, I was going to wrap it up, so perhaps Councillor Lemon should go first. OK, so, Councillor Lemon. If, if you have yeah, to I, that would be great, because I wasn't trying to. Uh, you had made the motion, and you should, certainly should wrap it up. The point I would make, and I heard and listened with interest to Councillor McManaman's comment, except that we do subsidize sports, we do subsidize uh, summer folk. I believe, I'm not sure what the rent is now for, for Kelso Beach, but I believe we charge summer folk something like $500 or something. They're paying full ticket now? Well, that's a change. It used to be subsidized. They've always paid full ticket here. Mm, well, anyway, I won't argue that one. But a healthy community, it, it gives an image to one sound which we're trying to cultivate. We're spending money in economic development, promoting the city as a place where you want to live, and people like healthy communities. That's one of the things that would influence somebody coming here. And I think this is the kind of thing that gives us uh, a higher profile. And uh, I really feel that uh, facilities, uh, yes, it, we should have had money in the budget. We didn't. But let's move forward and let's support this recommendation. Councillor Wright. 
Thank you very much. And normally, <clears throat> I I would be agreeing wholeheartedly with with Councillor McMahon and Ann, and I always do support what he is saying because he's right on. This is different because this is us. We are the Gregory's Regional Health Unit. This is paid for by our taxes that that we contribute to the county and and. Uh, it's our association, it's us that are putting it on, and I think that's the difference. It's, it's, it's our community, and it's our conference, basically. I know we're all participating in it. Councilor Chamberlain and myself are part of that organization, and it's, it's a taxpayer-funded organization that is giving back to the community. That's, that's the difference in this organization. Thank you. Councillor Boddy, and then back to Councillor Hare. Thank you. Um, to, to say that we don't have a policy, I don't think, is perfectly accurate, but it seems every year at, uh, at budget time we do discuss it, and we have a fairly thorough discussion, and we decide we're not going to spend any money. That's our position. We're not going to spend anything this year. We're not putting anything in, and, uh, and we're going to be tough, and we're going to stick to our guns, and then we kind of ignore it. Is there a way for staff to track every uh, application and request that comes in per year that it com could come back to us in some kind of report at budget time? I'll go to the Director of Finance. Thank you, Worship. Certainly, currently, we track the ones that are granted, but I'm sure working with my, my uh, colleagues here, we could, we could do that and report that back for Council. Just, yeah. just thinking for everyone who's sitting, uh, looking at the budget uh, in Ten months time, eight months time, twelve months time from now, um, maybe if we had sort of an outlay and we looked at well, what did we do? What are we getting these requests for right in front of us? We can decide then whether we're going to go to zero again, and we're not going to. We're going to be tough, and we're going to say no to everybody. Or if if we want to do that, and we can uh, set the budget, that's the appropriate time to uh, make these decisions. Is the policy currently accurately uh, to reflect um, requests of this nature, the policy states that they just simply come directly to council? Or is there in fact no policy existing currently? Through you, Your Worship, there are two policies. One relates to provincial and national events, yep. and there's a reduction in 30% of the facility rental relating to that type of event. There's a second policy that relates to fundraising, um, fundraising mm -hmm. events where an event, for example, like the Scenic City Order of Good Cheer, mm -hmm. they're using a facility, they're giving the money back for a playground, let's mm -hmm. say. They funnel that through the finance department. The, fi the policy allows Mr. Ritchie to take the first amount of what they give us and offset the facility <coughs> rental through their donation, but mm -hmm. it's only where they're giving 100% of the funds they raise to a city project, so there are two policies. Nothing specific to this sort of request. Thank you. So I would be accurate. Okay, Councillor McManaman, and then Councillor Adair. Thank you, Worship, and I, I would support the uh, comments that Councillor Habadi just raised about non-for-profit groups and requests we get. Uh, the only proviso I'd add is that we should look at all of the rentals we have of all the non-for-profits because certainly if you're opening the door you're opening the door um, and you won't have 10 requests you'll have all of them I would suggest if you're going to treat them fairly um, just because they haven't requested it yet if we have a policy that we waive fees for them you can bet they'll be requesting it the next year so that, that's the only proviso I would put in it might be helpful to know how much do we collect in rent from and I'm assuming it's non-for-profits we're talking about here. I'm not entirely certain, but uh, that might just be one. That's another uh, point to keep in mind. Thank you. Councillor Twaddle. Well, thank you, Your Worship. I won't be supporting the motion as well if I, if I follow through on Councillor Wright's argument that <coughs> we are public health, then I would point out that the Great Bruce Health Unit is funded at the county level. Uh, so if we waive the fees, the taxpayers of the city of Owen Sound would pay 100% of the waived fee rental. If we don't waive the fees, the taxpayers of Owen Sound would be paying approximately nine or 10% through the county levy. We pay 18% of Gray County's levy. And if we figure that, you know, I don't know exactly the split on the two levies, but if we figure that uh, it's 50-50, then we would be paying 9% 9, 9%. So um, 
I think it, you know. I think in fairness, uh, it should be spread across all the taxpayers of Gray Bruce, and not just to the taxpayers of Owen Sound. Councillor Purden. I think this is an interesting conversation, and I do think a, um, a look at policy would be very, very helpful. Uh, particularly, I think I said before. Um, how the city supports initiatives that are aligned with its strategic plan, with its vision, um, with in-kind donations, and how we put a value on that, and what the value for the city is when we make in-kind donations like that. I think there's room in our approach. Uh, where I struggle, I think the council really does need the opportunity to do things that are going to forward the vision and the strategic plan of the city. And we can, you know, put all our energy into just making sure we can't do anything by having policies and we can't spend, we can't do, we can't whatever. Um, I don't think that's really helpful. And certainly around emerging issues like healthy communities, I think we need to be behind this stuff. We're not going to do it for the rest of our lives. It's to get this started, to get the awareness out, to get people thinking. Uh, and to know that the city is really supportive. So I think it's such a great investment in our community and what it's costing is an in-kind donation to a, a legitimate partner in the process. So I think nickel and diming that stuff is just kind of cutting your nose off to spite your face. Councillor Adair. Thank this you, This is your wrap-up time. <clears throat> this is my wrap-up. Just to, um, to clarify, I am uh, moving option one, which was to forgive all facility rentals. I, I apologize for being somewhat facetious, but I thought that Councillor Body's uh, eloquent motion earlier in the evening about doing what we did last year was, uh, was an interesting one. So uh, it is option one that I am uh, moving. Uh, the Great Bruce Health Unit um, is not a not-for-profit organization. I understand exactly what Councillor McManaman is saying, and I support, uh, support what he's saying um, in principle. I think this does fall somewhat outside of the policies that we presently have in that it is an allied organization, uh, one that we, do, uh, that we do belong to. And I would also note the precedent that uh, this is basically the same function uh, from 2010 in which we did exactly the same, the same thing. So there is a precedent for doing this specifically with the, uh, the Grey Bruce Health Unit. Thank you. Okay, to the motion, all those in favor? Opposed? A motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, look forward to that uh, great conference. I'm looking forward to attending all day on the 15th. Unfortunately, can't be there on the 14th. There's a uh, major um, fundraising initiative that I'm involved in in the community uh, for the food bank and the um, Salvation Army, uh, or for O'Share. So uh, I'll uh, wish you the best on the evening, but I'll see you there in the daytime. Thank you. We have a recommendation and a report from the facilities booking coordinator. Uh, this is with regards to the use of the uh, J.D. MacArthur Arena and an agreement with the concert factory. Council's direction, Councillor Lemon. Yes, Your Worship, I would move the recommendation. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. We have uh, some minutes of some advisory committees, starting with Cultural Advisory Committee. Councillor McManaman? Sorry, Your Worship, I had a question on the finance minutes. Okay, Councillor Purden on the Cultural Advisory Committee. I was going to move acceptance of the minutes from the Cultural Advisory Committee. I haven't, uh, haven't disregarded that comment, <laughs> Councillor McMahon <-a> man <laughs> we'll, we'll do them in order. Uh, any discussion around these minutes? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. And uh, Finance Advisory Committee, we'll go to Councillor McMahon man Thank you, Worship. Question for the uh, Director of Finance. Um, there are several questions. The first one uh, talks about a Council Remuneration Committee. Um, the, the motion actually says they'll just receive the report for information. So I just want to be clear, are we approving uh, a committee be struck? That's my first question. And through you, Worship, yes, I, I was uh, under the impression that Council wished me to craft the, uh, uh, the outline for what the committee would do, so I was assuming that the committee was going to be struck based on uh, the recommendations I took to that committee. So that is my intent. 
Okay, great, thank you. Uh, the second question is about the uh, year-end report from Ms. Allen. Um, and I looked on the, the minutes page. <coughs> great, I've lost the page. It talks about the surplus this year, adding it to the stability reserve. Page four of 26. Four of, uh, four of eight and the, mm -hmm. the minutes. And, and I just want you to walk me through the numbers because you have the 2012 balance, the 2013 balance, but those numbers don't add up to the total. So if you could just walk me through that. There we go. Yes, uh, thank you. Through your worship, uh, Councilor McManaman brought this to my attention and I was able to work on that during the meeting. Um, sometimes we run into some troubles when we try to put into words our, our numbers. So I can tell you that in 2011, we had a surplus that went into the unallocated reserve of $210,000. In 2012, out of your surplus, you allocated another 180,000 to that unallocated reserve. It, it physically got moved in 2013, so it's, it's in that number. Then at 2012, you also allocated approximately $252,569 in surplus for items that we ended up not needing, and that was mostly around our transportation costs that we were trying to, one time, what we knew was gonna be a large increase. We did not need that money. So that is also included in there, as well as the <coughs> bottom line 2013 surplus of $74,842. That brings you a total in your unallocated reserve of $717,411. And council recall at budget, we allocated 100,000 of that to offset a one-time uh, insurance retro billing to reduce the budget. So at this time, approving these minutes tonight, you will have $617,411 sitting in an unallocated reserve that would be available for council to use for any unforeseen, we would certainly recommend one-time costs that may arise. And thank you for that explanation. And before we get too excited about having $600,000 in our <laughs> reserve, um, media reports recently about our snow removal budget for this past season have us approximately how much above what the budget is. Uh, through your worship, I've certainly been giving that information to the city manager who I believe is, is attending something tomorrow. So would you like me to go ahead or would you like to? <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm sure the city manager is enjoying a night off from driving the plow. <laughs> certainly it's difficult at any snapshot in time to tell you exactly what our costs are in winter maintenance because mostly of inventory and uh, literally ongoing labor costs by the day. But uh, based on my previous experience and analysis of, this, of these numbers, as we sit today, I believe we would probably be in the range of $400,000 over the cost I would hope to be in a normal year at this time. Having said that, we have been here in other years, perhaps not quite this high, but certainly close to this. And we have often had a very much milder, uh, less demanding on our staff, November and December. So we are hoping to see that again this year. I know the city manager has a wealth of information she received from our road superintendent on snowfalls and uh, mean uh, average temperatures that she will relate tomorrow. Um, but it's, uh, it's certainly been a different winter so far this year. Thus, I think council was very prudent these last number of years, setting aside this reserve for any one-time issue. We certainly hope to work through the summer and the fall, looking at all of our expenses to see if we can uh, keep this budget in line, but it is, I think it is a prudent move to have this reserve available. But currently as we look, I would think we're close to 400,000 over on winter control. Councilor McManus? It's just good to note that the city managers is guaranteeing that November and de December are going to be late <laughs> years. That's, that's an important point. <laughs> that is an important point. <laughs> 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 Um, oh, sir Lemon. So, oh, sorry. Oh, just, you're uh, not finished. Oh, just Go the ahead. last uh, yeah. last point. I just highlighted in the uh, operations committee minutes that the the discussion about Third Avenue East reconstruction looks like we are going to design and tender that for 2014 and and do it in 2015. I know there's been some discussion about exactly mm -hmm. how we move forward with that, and I just thought that's an important project we should highlight. Thank you, Worship. Councillor Lemon. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did we not have some surplus funds, that, not surplus funds, dedicated funds that we were trying to build up a fund for extreme winters in the operations budget? 
For you, Your Worship, that would be what I refer to as the unallocated reserve. Certainly some uh, throughout the community have probably referred to it as the snow fund, but it is just based on prior year's reserves that we have set in there for the last uh, three years now. So that is the same fund, correct? Okay, but we, I thought we had a dedicated fund just for snow. <coughs> Through your worship, we set one up, I'm going to say, and I could check it exactly for you, Councillor, six or seven years ago, um, it was roughly the same amount. It was approximately $200,000 one year, and we literally used it the next year. And since that time, until recently, have not been able to set up a fund again. Thank you. Councillor Adair. Thank you, Worship. I'd like to move the balance of the um, minutes. Uh, Finance Committee, Operations, uh, Parks and Recreation, those are the minutes. Thank you. Are there uh, any items within this, any of those minutes? Councillor Purden. Uh, just a question with the operations minutes and the uh, Third Avenue project with bike lanes. I couldn't quite understand from the minutes. What I understood was that it's too expensive to put bike lanes in there, but we should have options for healthy transportation or something. And it, it eluded me what actually was happening there. I sense that Councillor Twaddle is going to offer us uh, some enlightenment on this. We had a um, <clears throat> lengthy and interesting discussion about alternate transportation. We're not allowed to call them bike lanes anymore. <laughs> alternate transportation. Um, the, the cost of putting the lanes on 3rd Avenue is significant. We've asked staff to look at other options, including using the rail trail, which is within a few meters of the road um, along that section of 3rd Avenue. So uh, there'll be a report coming back to operations at the next meeting in, uh, in about three weeks. So um, if, I, if I could capsule the conversation in about two sentences, I would say there was strong agreement at the committee that of all the routes in the city, that's probably one of the highest used for alternate transportation and the opportunity needs to be there. At the same time, there was um, a recognition that this is a significantly expensive project and adding um, a million plus to it was going to be difficult and we needed to take some time and look at the best options that, that might meet our financial circumstances and also the need for um, all of the alternate transportation that occurs on that route. So, so um, I think we'll have a lot more information after the April meeting of the Operations Committee. I'll go back to Councillor Purden and the City Manager. Well, I'm relieved to know that something's being looked into, uh, particularly when today we got the report about global warming. Um, that is looking really very uh, serious and as a council I think we need to be very aware of how we're supporting alternative transportation. I think you actually called it active living options mm -hmm. in the minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice turn of phrase, but I don't think it's just about active living. It, we're going to have to start making investments in alternatives. Uh, so. Uh, I know it's expensive, but I'm really pleased that this is going to be looked at, and I hope seriously too. A and then there's a lot of people who use this route to get to the soccer complex and to go out to Leith yep. and the Conservation Authority. There is really a lot of uh, traffic, and we had a whole group come to do cycle tourism in Grey Bruce, uh, <coughs> and we were on the bikes, and they were really concerned about the not only the state of the road, but the the um, inability to safely have bicycles along the Georgian Bay shoreline. City Manager. Uh, just further to uh, Councillor Twaddle's comments, um, it may not be this month that we get that report back. It, it may take a little more time to get it right. Further discussion to any items within any of the uh, minutes? Ms. Coulter. Thank you, Worship. <clears throat> uh, Council will have a motion with respect to the in-camera minutes for recreation and park, and it would be appropriate that um, there be an additional motion in the open minutes that would have Council or the committee recommend or Council recommend approval 
uh, for the Volunteer of the Year and the Senior of the Year as they're presented in the in-camera minutes. Okay. Thank you. We will deal with one motion and then we'll, we'll come back to, to that. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Councillor Purden? It's a question just uh, also in, in camera. We dealt with the matter of two new uh, appointments to the DIA board. Does that also have to be uh, I'll go to the clerk. confirmed Thank here you. in open session? Um, we will be bringing a report back at our next meeting to, to address On that. those. Yes. Okay. In open session. Okay. Councillor Twaddle. So since the Director of Community Services can't make a motion, although I'm sure she'd like to, I would make the motion on her behalf. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, was, uh, I was hoping a member of council would pick up on that cue. Thank you. And that, that is to approve the individuals named in the in-camera minutes. Very those, exciting, for those, indeed. For that recognition. Yes. yes, thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Uh, we have a report from the planning, oh, where are we? We have a report from the, where are we, where are we? I am here. We have a report, <laughs> minutes of the in-camera council meetings on uh, March 17th and uh, Recreation and Parks. We have approved those as, uh, as well as part of Councillor Adair's omnibus motion. And we're now at other business. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm somewhat surprised by the speed with which we've gotten through our agenda tonight. I feel we've missed something. <laughs> no. <laughs> Counts, uh, any, uh, it was Councillor Chamberlain had an item. Yes, well, I was wanted to say I had a very pleasant day today at our library for the whole day. I think some of you may know that our, um, our CEO of the library, Cindy Weir, is uh, leaving at the end of this month and we had uh, time to uh, do quite a bit of work on her behalf today. One of the things that is uh, really two good news items, was, while she was uh, the, the new executive director, uh, she looked at how to get the information about the library out in the community and she started looking at some clubs. So now she started something that was not happening in our community and it's called a club fair and this will be the third time Last year when they had it, over 200 people attended, free of charge. And what it is, it's um, the whole downstairs of the library is filled up with a kiosk of people who run clubs in this community. And it gives them an opportunity to tell people about their club, to recruit new members, also to recruit volunteers. So uh, it's well prescribed. There's a waiting list of groups that would like to come to this club fair. And the, uh, the other good news story is that the Friends of the Library will have their own booth there and they're recruiting. And I just wanted to uh, put a, um, a call out to anyone who thinks they would like to work further with our library that uh, please come and see us at that club fair. It's on April the 12th from 10 until 3. Okay. In the downstairs of the library. What a great, uh, what a great event. Great opportunity for people that are looking for uh, new clubs to join or uh, expand their horizons. Crokino, I think, is always a good, uh, good opportunity for people. You're I am. Thank you. Uh, I believe I was the only other member of council with um, with an item of other business, and this is. Um, I, I'm hoping that the media will be at full attention. Uh, just, I'd like to clarify a recent article in the Sun Times. Um, this is in reference to my response to a letter to the editor that was written by a small group of the original 2005 MRI fundraising group. Um, while we recognize that council uh, always looks to the clerk of a municipality to advise uh, as to the appropriateness of in-camera discussions, I think it's very important to note uh, that it is ultimately council as a whole who determines in the best interests of the municipality whether discussion be in-camera or not. Council as a whole in 2011 provided direction to city officials to discuss with hospital foundation officials the matter of the MRI contribution. In the spirit of accountability and openness and our commitment to transparency in this municipality, I would like to offer an acknowledgement that the past and current staff of the clerk's office at all times has provided council with appropriate and professional opinions on matters related to best practices for open and transparent meetings. Again, to be clear, 
Council chose to discuss the matter in camera in the best interests of the city. I thank you for um, allowing me the opportunity to, uh, to clarify that and um, provide uh, clear and open, transparent and accountable uh, municipal governance for this community that we have tremendous pride in in Owen Sound and in fact are held up uh, as a model uh, across Ontario. So thank you for that. We need a motion that the committee rise. Thank you, Councillor Adair. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. We are in formal session. A resolution adopting proceedings in Committee of the Whole, please. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Twaddle. The actions taken in Committee of the Whole, considering public meetings, deputations, public question period, matters arising from <coughs> correspondence, reports, matters tabled. Motion for which notice was previously given and other business be confirmed by this Council. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried. Uh, notices of motion. Seeing none, new business by resolution. Bylaws, please. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Twaddle at bylaws number 2014 038, 039, 040, 041, 042, 043, 044, 045, 046, 047, 048, 049, and 2014, 050 be passed and enacted. Discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Opposed? That motion is carried and we are now adjourned. Thank you.